So. All right, man. You ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Confidence comes from a Latin word, fidere. That means to trust. Therefore, having self-confidence is having trust in oneself. Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 29 of the Model Mindset. I'm Brian. As always, we got my boy John. I'm sure you guessed it, but today's episode is going to be on confidence. So John, what does confidence mean to you, my friend? Ooh, it's a loaded question, right? Yeah. Because you gotta, you have to be able to, um, you know, kind of think truthfully about yourself when you think about confidence, right? Because it's not, it's not something that comes easily to a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, especially in you know tough situations, right? Yeah. But you know, for me, confidence is it's an accumulation of skills, experiences, right? That you kind of have over time, that that gives you a sense of belonging. And if, if we don't challenge ourselves to have the experiences, to put ourselves in uncomfortable positions, to learn new things, and then kind of develop and grow, well, then you're not going to have confidence. You're not going to yeah. grow as a person, and you're not going to develop confidence because you're not experiencing these things. Yeah. So confidence is such a, such a unique thing because it's, it's, like a, it's like a forceful thing to kind of, you got to put yourself out there a little bit. Do you think when we're like young, like really young kids, that we just have confidence instilled in us and as we age and get older, it, I don't want to say it goes away, but it definitely lessens? See, I think that, I don't think it's confidence when you're young. I think it's you're naive. Okay. That's a good that's a good point. Right. Yeah. So I don't I don't think you have the awareness to have the confidence when you're young. I just think that, you know, and I think over time as you get older, you know, the experiences, the opinions of others, all these things kind of compile. Yeah. And you have to learn how to build confidence. It's not something you just have, I don't think, personally. I don't believe I that. I agree. And I don't, do you agree with that? I agree. I, I think especially with sports. I think it's easier, especially if you excel at sports. Right, right. I think it's easier to have self-confidence in yourself, mm -hmm. uh, which then can translate to other areas of your life. Right. Where you can be, where you can become confident in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as like if you don't have sports in your life, that's where I'm kind of like, hmm. How do, you, how, do you, how do you get confidence? Right. But now, of course, that I'm not as active in soccer as I used to be, mm. it's more correlated to taking action and learning. You know. So what is it? How would you define confidence? I'm like, what does confidence mean to you? So I think confidence to me is a belief in yourself. I think it's a belief in yourself that you are taking what you've learned from life mm. and you're applying it to either day to day. Uh, experiences right if there is a challenge presented your way you kind of recall past experiences to have that uh, I, I said belief but I would say reassurance that you can handle any kind of situation okay right right and not um, freak out in a way yeah yeah you know um, utilize resources, things of that nature. So I think it's a belief in yourself that you can kind of handle any situation. Right. And, and, and kind of going back to what you were saying before, like, so like when we're younger, a lot of, you know, you, you tend to be more outgoing, right? And all that stuff when you're younger, for the most part, it's because again, I think you're naive to situations yeah. and you're naive to, you know, the opinions that others may have of you, right? Yeah. So when do we feel like that may shift? Like, when do you kind of feel like the evolution of having confidence or losing confidence starts to develop in an individual. You know, that's that's a very good question. You know, you I I would imagine personally, you know, as you as you discover who you are as a person, mm -hmm. when that's happening is is when that transition of okay, do I have confidence? Am I losing confidence? You know, do I lack it? Where can I gain it? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I think. I think that's where it might happen. Well, especially too when we're younger, we we don't call it confidence. 
No. You know, no. we just like, hey, I'm really good at this sport. I'm really yeah, good right. at this thing. Or I'm very outgoing, like you said. I was very introverted as a kid. So when you I were was introverted as I a kid, very introverted. I was very introverted. Yes. Very really? Introverted. Oh, yeah. I was very shy. But because of soccer, yeah, I acquired a lot of friends. Right, right. You know, um, they allowed me to feel comfortable mm -hmm. so I could be myself. Yeah. But I was still very shy. Soccer was my outlet. It was like my saving grace. If I didn't have soccer, to be quite honest with you, I don't know where I'd be. I didn't know. I don't know what kind of confidence I would have. I wouldn't be as confident, confident as I am today. Yeah. So, like, so would you say, though, that soccer almost became your identity then? Oh, dude. It was my identity. It was my identity and my self-worth. So, let, let's think of it this way then. Yeah. What if you don't have an identity or you're having trouble discovering your identity as you're getting older? Dude, I feel like that would impact someone's confidence. Oh, without a doubt. Because then it's almost like you're struggling to find who you are. You're almost just going through, you're letting life take you yes. rather than you take life. Right, right. And when you don't understand your identity or when your identity is tied into a thing like a sport. Right. And then it's no longer there for you anymore. Yep. I think you do freak out and you have to, that's when I think you have to explore your passions. You have to explore what gives you energy. Yeah. Uh, rely on your support system, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of just think things through. Yeah. Um, and honestly, to get to gain confidence, you definitely have to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You have to try new things. For sure. You know? Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that's well, hard. Where, where did you get your confidence from, if you don't mind me asking? Man. Because you strike me as a pretty confident dude. Yeah, yeah. I always, you know, it's funny because, like, we're almost the opposite in a way, mm -hmm. right? So, like, you were introverted as a kid. Yeah. Came out of your shell as you grew into an adult. Right. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was out of my shell, loud, obnoxious, all these things as a kid, and, and still am maybe to people who know me, right? But, yeah. like, as I've gotten older, maybe you become more introverted. Interesting. You know, so so like you and I kind of, you know, go the opposite way. We don't really yeah. mirror each other in that sense. But like, you know, I, I think a lot of it was sports as right. a kid. You know what I mean? I think the more you are involved in those things, it helps you come out of your shell a little bit, right? So yeah. that's kind of what, as a kid, I identified myself with, right? Um, my confidence also came with, I think, the fact that I hung out with a lot of older kids. Okay. Like I hung out with people like Josh, you know, who's who's, you know, three or four years older than me, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of his friends. Mm -hmm. And so my confidence came from, okay, well, if I, if I can hang out with them and they don't mind having me around, or at least they're not telling me they don't mind having me around, like, right. then that gave me confidence yeah. because I was putting myself in a position maybe that was above me, right? Yeah. And if you just translate that into the adult world, you're still doing the same things as an adult. Yeah. You're still putting yourself maybe in uncomfortable positions like we talk about a lot or yeah. rooms you think you don't belong in or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and we realize that's where we gain confidence. But if we're afraid to do those things yeah. or we feel like we're not welcome in those places, that's where you lose the confidence. So yeah. like those things are, are the same really as yeah. when you're younger versus when you're older. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I agree with you hundred percent on that. And I think too, as we are older, yeah. I think it can be challenging to gain confidence in yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, and you had mentioned it briefly earlier, but as we know, when we're younger, our environment is very impactful mm -hmm. on young kids. Yeah. You know, we heard it from Dr. Bruce Lipton, zero to seven. It's basically taking out a camcorder and programming everything. Right. Dropping a camcorder on us here. Huh? That's right. <laughs> and so I think that critical age can impact someone's self-confidence yeah. that they carry that with them right. into adulthood. Right. So I think if someone is suffering from confidence right now, they may want to kind of explore, have you always had low self-confidence in yourself? Yeah, right. Why is that? Yeah. And it could be, and again, I'm just, we're just having an open conversation. For sure. Yeah. It could be where maybe your parents were very critical of you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it could be where maybe you didn't have a lot of friends. Maybe you were bullied, so you don't have a lot of confidence in yourself. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that if someone is like listening to this now and saying, mm -hmm. holy shit, yeah, Brian, you're right. This right. has happened to me since I was like a teenager. Man, start, begin the healing process. Right. You know, begin the healing process, start journaling about it. 
because you can you can acquire self confidence. For sure, you can acquire it. You can, you know? right? But and in, 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 again, we talk we talk a lot about the people we listen to, right? And we take advice from and learn from, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mel Robbins talked a lot about, and she had a really great conversation with Annie Porterfield, yeah, who who we also you know adore, yeah. Um, and they had a great conversation, and it revolved around the premise of you don't have confidence. You, you you don't you that's not the first step of it. You have to have courage before you have confidence. I like that. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the courage to put yourself in those rooms. It's the courage to explore yourself as an individual. Why do you why are you the way you are? Right? Right. Be willing to peel back those layers. Yeah. When you develop more courage and you're putting yourself in those environments, then you have confidence. Ooh, that's good. You know what I, I mean? Like so like it's courage that. before confidence. And yeah. I thought that was so interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and it sounds like something that a lot of us probably don't make that correlation. You just think you, if you, you got it or you don't. Yeah. And that's just not true. I agree. And you know what's funny? You made me just think about when we went and lifted at Lightning Fitness. Yep. Nate. We did the Atlas Stones. Yeah. That took courage. That shit was heavy. Yeah. We could have made complete ass out of ourselves. For but sure. But we did not give a fuck. Yeah. We took the courage. And guess what? Quite frankly, I want to start going to other gyms and yeah. just working out and meeting new people. Right. You know, there is a really tough run in summers, Soapstone Mountain. Uh, I believe it's in July or August. And it's like a five mile incline run. Yeah. I want to do that fucking thing. I want you to do it too. I got you. And the whole thing is because you have to, like you said, develop the courage or muster up the courage. Right. Does don't give a fuck if I. It's a challenge. Right. I, right. I use the F word. Fail. <laughs> use but, the other F word. <laughs> yeah. It's. I know it's going to be hard, but you got to push yourself. Yeah. You know because again, it's going to be. I'm going to gain more confidence. Yeah. You're going to gain more confidence. Right. Because we do tough shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it can be physical, it can be mental, it could be, you know, between with interactions, right? Like yeah. for me, the courage that I need to develop more and more as time goes on and I, and I feel like I'm doing a really good job at it lately is the courage to not be so introverted and interact more with people who I don't know. Right? Ah, or, yeah. you know, like And you've been so you've been making a conscious effort and yeah, putting yourself out there. Yeah, having conversations with people. Yeah, yeah, and it, and, and it, you. like small talk, like yeah. you know, like as, as you would call it, right? Like yeah. it's small talk. I fucking love small talk, but sorry, you do. You're you're a big small <laughs> talk guy. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, right. So yeah. it's like, all right, well, trying to find ways to be like, all right, show interest in someone else. You know what I mean, yeah. or however it may be, but like that, that's courage. I agree. And it, courage just isn't doing things that are dangerous or whatever like that, right? Courage is just being uncomfortable in your own skin sometimes and yeah. being like, no, this is good for me. I'm going to yeah. grow from this. 100%. So, like, that's, you know, their conversation was awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something that over time, though, right? Yeah. When you start to develop confidence, right? Yeah. Do you think it's something that, Eventually, you have to maybe, you know, understand the kinds of confidence and how you show it. Like when, you once you have, have it, so like when I think of like developing confidence, yep. for me, like, have, like having confidence doesn't necessarily mean showing confidence a lot of times. Right. So like you can have confidence by being an extremely good listener. Yeah. And learning and observing yeah. and doing those things, right? You don't have to go into the room and be the loudest in the room. Absolutely not. Because oftentimes the people who are loudest in the room lack the most confidence. This is very true. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I think once you develop confidence, finding the ways you feel comfortable showing your confidence, yeah. or even not showing your confidence, right? But like if it's in you, mm -hmm. that's what's most important. I think too, a confident person has like an aura about them yeah i think it's it's the way they carry themselves 100 percent. i think it's also they're consistent in yeah. any kind of setting mm -hmm. meaning i know exactly what person i'm gonna get 
when I see you like every day, yeah, right, I know right. exactly what person I'm going to get. Yeah. Certain people that I interact with frequently, I know exactly what person I'm going to get. Same thing with me. It doesn't matter if I'm presenting to like the CEO at Cigna or right. whatever. You're going to see the same person every right. time. Yes. You know, and I think that is what a competent person does. Yep. You know, they don't adapt to certain situations. Yeah. They carry themselves respectfully. They listen well. Yep. They communicate well. Um, I think that is how a competent person carries themselves. I, did, I agree with you. Yeah. I think there's there's levels of respect mm -hmm. for yourself and show and being shown to others that go hand in hand with confidence. Right. Because, like you said, you know, I think I think if you're you, no matter wherever your setting is, you have a set amount of self-respect for yourself. This is who I am. Yeah. You have an understanding of who you are, right? Yeah. I'm gonna present my I'm gonna present myself as I am because I'm confident that I'm a good person or whatever it may be, right? Um, but like I said, you're a good listener. You can interact well. You're you know you're play whatever it is. But that to me though, like that's that's a level of confidence too because you can put yourself in an environment where people maybe are a little more rough around the edges, right, or whatever it is, and you don't feel the need to evolve to your environment. Yeah, I agree with you. You know what I mean? I like people call it code switching sometimes, right? Yeah. Like when you code switch around people who, you know, identify in different ways. I think when you don't do that and you are you in every setting, in every environment, no matter the, the temperature of the room, mm -hmm. that's, like, that's like the ultimate confidence. Would you assume that someone that is not, that is struggling with loving themselves because mm -hmm. you said comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. I'm just kind of saying this out loud, but would you say someone that maybe doesn't love themselves, isn't comfortable in their own skin, will suffer from confidence? A lack of lack confidence? of confidence for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that as well. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you had brought up Mel Robbins. Yep. Another person that we speak very high of, highly of is Ed Milet. Oh yeah. And I, I actually follow through with this. <clears throat> and this is extremely beneficial for anyone that's suffering from self-confidence. But it's confidence grows by taking action and following through on the promises we are making to ourselves. You have to build a reputation within yourself that you do the things you say you are going to do. That's huge. That is huge. Yep. And you and I, you and I both structure our day. Yep. We prioritize shit. We do. And I cross shit out when I do it. Yep. When you do that, when we go to the gym in the morning, I say I'm going to work out. I follow through. Mm -hmm. I am keeping the promises that I'm making to myself. Right. And my con the reason why I have high level confidence right now is because I follow through with myself, and I also follow through with others. Right. When you follow through with yourself, you're holding yourself to a higher standard. Yeah. So, like an uh, an example is, if you are trying or struggling with your health, right? Yep. Start keeping promises to yourself. If you say I'm going to dial in my nutrition, but you're overwhelming yourself because we had overwhelm last week's podcast. Check, okay, it, check out. it out. But if you're overwhelming overwhelming yourself with, hey, I have to change every single meal to make it healthy. Mm -hmm which means you're not taking action, which means you're not keeping promises to yourself, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up for failure. Yep. So start off with like, okay, today I'm going to have a healthy breakfast. Mm -hmm. Write that down. Cross it off. Mm -hmm. You made that promise, you kept it. Right. That, that will impact your self-confidence and it will start to grow. 100%. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're kind of right now, I think we're transitioning into the how do we develop confidence yes. right yeah and i and i i love what you hit on because an, another another way that i i've heard it spoken and i, and I forgive me because i can't remember who says it um and i'm sure a lot of our, our mentors and stuff say it but stop negotiating with yourself stop allowing yourself to negotiate on every decision mm -hmm. because you're talking yourself out of things yeah right have the mindset of, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Sometimes when you, we're our own worst enemy. We get I think more times than not we are. Oh, yeah. Right? 
Yeah. I think that's, that's totally fair. Yeah. But when you can sit there and say to yourself that I'm not negotiating this, I'm doing it. Yeah. And I, and a lot of times I've seen that with like, you know, like cold plunging. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a very hot, like uh non-negotiable. That's, it is. It's exactly it. Yeah. Right. And I've heard a lot of people say it like, you walk out, you look at the water, it's 30 degrees, and you're going, oh, I don't want to yeah. get in, I don't want to get in, you know, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, like, and Tony Robbins says it, like, I'm not having this conversation with you. Yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. like, when you have the assurance in yourself and the confidence in yourself, yeah, you, you develop those through your habits throughout the day. Yeah. That's how you develop it. Yeah. That's how it grows. And Dr. Joe Dispenza says the same thing to where it's, specifically about the cold plunge. Yeah. People think about getting in the water. But if you think about how it makes you feel after, you're more likely to get into the water. 100%. You know it's, I mean? it's absolutely true. So it's like, don't think about how cold the water is. Think about how good you're going to feel after that. And, and it's, it's like with, it's the same thing with like working out. Think about how good, it, don't think about sweating. Don't think about how you have to get there early. Think about how you're going to feel after. Right. Be motivated. You're going to yep. feel focused. Endorphins and dopamine are going to oh, be yeah. flying everywhere. Right. You know right. what I mean? And, and, and that's totally true, Yeah. first off, because that's like one of the first things that I'll always like take a moment to myself. The second I get out of the tub, the cold tub, I'm yeah. like, you did it. Yeah. Like, you, you did damn it. good. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's like, confidence, You though, said right you were going to do it. You did it. Right? Yeah. And, um. We, and but we do that with every decision in our day. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's oh my god, I got to stop and, and run this errand. And then you think of the four reasons why you're not going to stop on the way home to do that errand. Yeah. And and what happens? You talk yourself out of it, right? Yeah. And you're allowing your brain to have that leeway to escape. Yeah. And not keep promises to yourself, like you yeah. said. Yeah. And but it it, it could be with the most simple things. Yeah. So like you said, like if you can start something, start with something simple. Yeah. I'm gonna eat a healthy breakfast today. Yeah. It's not a discussion. Yeah. Put down, you know, the cinnamon bun. Yeah. Right. And yeah. have and have some fruit and some eggs or whatever you want, an avocado, like whatever it is you you desire. Yeah. That's on the on the healthier side of things. And this is a simple. Uh, because this is a non-fitness one. Right. But think about when you have laundry to do. Oh, yeah. And think about when you do the laundry, you fold it, and you put it away. Mm -hmm. How accomplished do you feel? Right. And you say, I'm going to do my laundry today. Yeah. And you follow through with that. You Hey, you feel good. Right. Because you're like, wow, I did that. No one likes doing laundry. I fucking hate doing laundry. <laughs> but and when I didn't. When I'm able to put it all away and do it in one day, I feel so good. And it's, I do feel kind of confident about it because, hey, I said I was going to do my laundry. I put it away and I held a promise. And you could be hearing this and thinking, well, what, like, how, what does that have to do with confidence, though? Like, what is, what is doing your laundry or, you know, going into a cold tub or whatever like that, having a healthy breakfast? What does that have to do with confidence? Mm -hmm. And it's building habits and rituals. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's not, it's not so much the task, it's the process of the task. Right. It's the process of accomplishing those tasks. The, the process of setting higher standards for yourself. Right. That's what it's about. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. We're not talking about fucking laundry. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're yeah. talking about the process. Exactly. And well, the and process that. Yeah. is what brings you confidence. Exactly. And that's where we lose sight of it. Yeah. yeah, because we we think that it has to, confidence has to come from accomplishing things, right? Right, I agree. And having having lines on your resume mm -hmm. and those things. That's not that's not what confidence is, right? And yeah. and you mentioned Ed Milet, and I want to go back to it because I, I wrote down a great quote he had in his conversation with Lewis House. Yeah, okay. Um, and I thought it was I thought it was really really interesting. Um, how he explained this because it is the essence of everything we're talking about today. So he said to never link your confidence to your ability. If you link your confidence to your ability or achievements, you'll be chasing it forever. 
Link your confidence to your intentions. Mm. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Your intentions, your process, like these things, that's what you link your confidence to. Yeah. Because if your intentions are to to keep the promises to yourself, to have non-negotiable, to be a good person, to have respect, to show respect, to get respect, like those are the things that are going to build your confidence. It's true. Not you know, not the accomplishment of I got this new car, right? Yeah. Or, you know, I got I did this, I did that, I, I you know, I accomplished that. Yeah. Because there's always more to accomplish then. Yeah. And you're you're just you're chasing your tail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I thought that was very interesting how he was able to word that yeah. to get you to feel like it's not about the material things when it comes to confidence. Well that's deep. And I think especially when you talk about intention. You know, I think that's huge. Intent. So this is, all right, let me ask you this now. Yeah. Okay. Fire away. So do you feel like you understand fully now more than, say, five years ago, right? And, and I think it may evolve, mm -hmm. which I guess is the basis of my question, but do you think your intentions as a person change as time progresses? Absolutely. Okay. I think... You always have an opportunity to, to evolve. Yeah. I think you learn from your mistakes. I think you learn from from life. I mean, I feel like I became a brand new person uh, not only when I met my wife, you know, but also when I had kids. Yeah. Like my heart just like exploded right. with love. And it was weird because I never was really a a, a, a guy that interacted with kids you know because yeah. i never wanted to give off like that pedophile kind of vibe, you know, you know? <laughs> we may have to edit that out but uh but like all this, now that i have kids man like i'll wave the kids right exactly i'll kind right. of play with the boat yeah, yeah, yeah you know no, i'll not say that but you know uh <laughs> but i find that since i have gotten older my intention is more around supporting others mm -hmm. My attention is more around lifting up others. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. This is very transparent with this. There's been a lot of times people have asked me, well, how much are you making for the podcast? Mm -hmm. How much are you doing this? What do, what do your numbers look like and everything? And I'm like, that's not our intention. Yeah. Our intention is to help people. Right. Our goal is to help people transform their body and their minds. Right. The money thing, we're not concerned about that. Right. Okay. We're having fun doing this. We enjoy this. We enjoy changing, you know, the messages that we receive. Yeah. That's what it's about right now. Right. That's what it's about. Exactly. You know? And, and, and it does, and, but a perfect example, right? That's always going to be our intention. Right. Right. Our intentions will evolve. To have success in a business too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That that's we see that we're yeah. working toward that every day. Right. Okay. Um, so our intentions could change, you know, a tiny bit yeah. in the next year. I where think they would evolve. Yeah. yeah. More than change, right? Yeah. Evolve, right? Or get added, whatever it yeah. is. But like, but that's normal. I feel like, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of how I am too. Like I'm with you on that, and where it's like. As someone who's very introverted, and like even Danny will say it to me sometimes, and like she'll she'll have people say it to her where it's like they call you introverted. No, no, oh. they're they're surprised I'm doing something like this. Oh, it's great, and they're like, I I can't I can't believe John's yeah. doing that. I can't believe he's you know like he's talking about the things he's talking about and doing the things he's doing and, and stuff like that because yeah. I'm naturally, that's how yeah. people recognize me, the people who know me in my yeah. circle, really. So, um, but my intentions changed a little bit right. in, in the last, you know, eight, nine months mm -hmm. where I really now am seeking self-growth. Yeah. And, and that's not something that I'm chasing like Ed Milet was talking about, where it, it's not like a, a, an accomplishment or a line on a resume. Right. Self growth is something very big oh, yeah. within a person, right? Yeah. But that that discovery of self self growth and that discovery of like 
how to accomplish it with our processes and with our intentions, I have certainly noticed a level of confidence in myself that's changed too. When, I, we, when we talked about this, you know, you know, bringing this topic up a few weeks ago. Like, yeah, I would say, you know, it's funny you say that too because with our evolution in our journey, yeah, I think we're probably, at least I am, I'm as confident as I have been in my entire life right now. Easily. And it's because of our growth. Yeah. It's because of our daily habits. Yes. It's because of our practices that we do. Yeah. And the and the knowledge that we acquire on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think the other part of it is we are willing to put ourselves out there. More. I, was, I was hoping you were going to say that. Yeah. Right. And to gain those experiences. Yeah. Whether we fall on our face. Yeah. Or not, we'll dust ourselves off. And you know what? You and I are both always on the same pages. We'll learn from it. Exactly. We're not going to let it deter us. Yeah. And I think since we both are on the same page with that and we continue to learn, our confidence isn't going to take a hit. Yeah. Or if it does, we know that we'll bounce back from it. Yeah. You know? And we're also, we're, you worded as putting yourself out there, right? We're doing things we've never done. Yeah. We're reaching out to people we've never reached out to. Yeah. We're going to be sitting in rooms very soon. Yeah. With people that we didn't think we'd be sitting room in rooms with, absolutely not. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah. um, and that's exciting, right? Yeah, a little intimidating sometimes uh, because it's new, right? And our comfort level is is being tested, yeah, and it's expanding, yeah. right? And and something that yeah we talked about, I think on Sunday. Uh, when we were talking about the, you know, the podcast and all that, what we wanted to talk about, and I kind of just said it in, a, in our brainstorming session, and we both were like, oh, that was good, like write that down, right? <laughs> and, and it was, because we're talking about it now, and I'll bring it up, it was, we allow our confidence levels to be dictated by our comfort levels. Right, right, 100%. It's, and it's probably the hardest thing for people to adjust is their comfort levels. Yeah. Because why adjust it, right? Well, especially with the pandemic, too. I think I, I, a good example, too, and I don't mean to interrupt. No, you, go ahead, man. But the other day, we had this huge meeting. Yeah. And they want people to start going back into the office. Yeah. And people are freaking out. Because it's been since 2020 where the offices have basically just been vacant. Yeah. Right? So there's a level of comfort. Yeah. No one wants to leave their comfort zone now. Right. They like saving money on gas. Right. They like having the flexibility of their, their kids and stuff. Yeah. So a lot of people were bitching about it. Yeah. Which I get. Yeah. But at the same time, think about when you were going back in the office. Think about the interactions that you had, the yeah. networking, the resources. Right. Right now, I don't interact with anybody. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Besides right. the gym. I don't. It's just yeah. all virtual. Right. And you don't develop that same relationship yeah. as you do person to person, face to face. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, and it's funny because like when we mention the pandemic now, right, I think we're using it a little bit as a crutch at oh, this point. Fuck yeah. You know, I really do. I, I, don't, I don't even like hearing about it anymore. Yeah. And I hope that doesn't sound irresponsible when I say that, but no. it, it's, it's genuinely how I feel. Yeah. I th and I think I think we're using it as an excuse to distance from each other still. Yeah. Not physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. right? Um, our interactions are limited by design now, um, and that's going to have a huge, huge impact on people's confidence. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Because you're retraining yourself mm -hmm. on how to interact with a human being. Yeah. And that's so. like, and that's where a lot of confidence comes from. Yes. You know what I mean? Your ability to, to hold a conversation, communicate. To connect. Yeah. It's right? Through text or on the computer. Like you said, know. a feeling of belonging. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't have that, generally speaking, without another human being. Yeah. So um, there's, there's different ways. I think we talked about that you can develop that confidence, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of it does circle around that, I feel like. I agree with you. And before we get into how we've struggled with self-confidence, John, yeah. we got to take a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, we certainly do. All right. So we'd like to take a quick minute to introduce our sponsor. It's called Two Feet for Good, and they are full-time travel 
nonprofit raising funds for families impacted by high medical expenses. Through ultramarathon running, they have been able to help families pay medical bills and buy medical equipment for ongoing medical conditions. Starting May 1st, the founder, Kevin Coughlin, will begin a 250-mile race through Arizona to raise funds for the Kennedy family. <clears throat> I got to start over because I got like a fucking thing in my throat and I fucking sound like a goddamn rapist. Sorry. A rapist. Oh, man. All good. I'm sorry. All good here. <sighs> All right. You look great, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Go, go ahead, my guy. There we go. We'd like to take... You know what? This. this is it now. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'd like to take... <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I forgot how to talk. I think you might have. Okay. We'd like to take a quick minute to introduce our sponsor. It's called Two Feet for Good, and they're a full-time traveling nonprofit. We'd like to take a quick minute to introduce our sponsor. It's called Two Feet for Good, and they're a full-time traveling nonprofit raising funds for families impacted by high medical expenses. Through ultra marathon running, they have been able to help families pay medical bills and buy medical equipment for ongoing medical conditions. Starting May 1st, the founder, Kevin Coughlin, will begin a 250-mile race through Arizona to raise funds for the Kennedy family, who have, after their fifth child, the mother was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. All funds donated through May 10th will go directly to the family to help pay for treatments. Donations can be made through Venmo or PayPal. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram for information and how to donate. So please donate. Absolutely. We'll have it on our Instagram pages uh, pretty much every day. Uh, keep an eye out. We had a couple posts out as for it as well. Uh, so yeah, two before good. They're doing they're doing some great stuff, man. I, I, I'm really excited for Kev. Yeah. And uh, what he's gonna do in Arizona. And he is balls deep in his training. So. He is yeah. balls deep in that yeah. training for sure. Out in Texas right now, Woo! grinding. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, keep it up, Kev, man. We're yeah. proud of you, for real. Absolutely. So, John, back to our self-confidence discussion. Let's do it. Was there a time in your life where you really struggled with self-confidence, would you say? Yeah, you know, um, and, and thinking about it, and the more I thought about it, right, the more I actually understood it from a level that I never thought of it. Interesting. Originally, right? Mm -hmm. So, throughout pretty much mo most of my career, um, professionally, right? Mm -hmm. um, originally, when I was about nineteen, twenty, I was in uh, I was in college. I was I was discovering what kind of what I wanted to do with my life, and it ended up being I found an interest in criminal justice, and said, "Okay, uh, I will take police exams. I'll, I'm going to be a police officer." Um, that's that's what I'm gonna take. That's something I can be proud of myself for. I'll you know I'll be doing good. This and that, right? Yeah. Mine was made up. So at 20 years old, I started taking some uh, police exams. Some went well, some didn't. Mm -hmm. Passed some. Um, I don't think I ever failed any actually. I, I but it just didn't didn't go far in the process after I passed the initial test, right? Yeah. Do some oral exams and all these things like that, right? Um, but just kind of kept falling short, falling short, falling short. Um, ended up in the final four uh, for uh, Southfield. Oh, nice. um, didn't get a call back um, after that. Once I found out I was in the final four, never got a call back for it. Um, and that was probably like maybe like a – I probably, probably started when I was 19, actually. And it was probably like a two-year process at this point. Okay. And I just kept kept getting turned away, turned away, turned away. And I'm like, I can, you know, I would be really good at this job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would 100%. I could do this, right? Yeah. But it was kind of just a kick in the nuts every single time. I was like, man, like, what the hell? And um, so at, as time went on during this whole process, what I, I was doing security for, for my, for my uh, profession at that point. And... It just kind of kept progressing. I, I kept getting promoted, um, and it, it slowly started to become a realization that 
this is becoming a career. Yeah. Right? And how old are you at this point? Probably 22, okay. right? 23, I remember. So Danny, I had just started dating. So I was about 23. And I got uh, promoted again at, at my job to cover, to be like a district loss prevention person. Yeah. Security manager. So I'd cover like, you know, whatever, 13 locations, whatever it was, travel around, this and that. And I remember sitting in the kitchen at then Danny's house um, that, that she was living in, having the conversation of, I, I, do I do this? Do I take this job? Because mm -hmm. if I do this, I'm, I know I'm going to probably stay here. Like you knew you were going to be there for a while? I knew I was going to be there. Like this is, I, I knew that this was now going to be my career. And that the chase of a police officer or law enforcement was likely going to be over. Okay. Okay. Um, I would have been, the salary would have been comparable. So why, 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 why leave a comfort zone? Right. Right. So I remember saying it to her, like, am I settling? And she's like, no, you're not settling. Like it's it just, things change. And so I took the job. And it's been on that career path ever since, right? Here I am, 33. Yeah. Okay. We connected. You know, we've always been friends, obviously, but we, you know, we connected in this capacity. Um, just before I turned 33, a few months before that. And it was at that moment that I realized, well, I want something a little bit more. And what it was, man, was... I think I let that early stage of my adulthood where I had my mind made up on something, it beat me down. Mm -hmm. I essentially failed at achieving that goal and it made me settle for an extended period of time in my life. And it was all because I feel like I felt like that this is the limit I can reach. Interesting. So you put a limiting belief on yourself. 100%. Wow. And I was like, this is, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'll retire with. Yeah. Like, this is the person I am professionally. Yeah. Which is why I always resented identifying myself as what I do for a profession. Because I was borderline and still kind of am to this day. Mm -hmm. To be totally transparent. Yeah. Borderline and not embarrassed might be the wrong word, but like, I'm not proud of it. Yeah. It's not something I brag about mm -hmm. because I feel like I fell short on yeah. something. Um, and I feel like it has nothing to do now. I understand this, nothing to do with my intentions as a person. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, that's where it all kind of, it came to the realization of like that limiting belief killed my confidence as wow. me realizing the full potential of who I can be and my capabilities as a person. Yeah. It's incredibly fascinating to be Isn't honest. it? Yeah. And I feel I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Because anytime, you know, I, we would see each other at like gatherings and stuff, we never brought up work. No. And it's almost like we didn't say it, but we almost had a mutual understanding that not that we didn't want to talk about our works, our work, but it's not something that like we wanted to associate ourselves with. Right. You know, like I always, dude, I always known that you were a great dude, and I believed in you with anything. Right. You know, personally, I always thought that you were going to become a police officer. Yep. And I knew you'd be a great police officer. Mm. But it's funny how things uh, come full circle. Yeah. You wanted to help people. Yeah. Guess what? Right. This is what we're doing now. Exactly. We're helping people. Right. You know? And it's now something that, like, if someone was to ever ask me now what I'm doing yeah. or what I do, it's this. It, 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 exactly. It's this. Right? I, was, I was on a, I was giving a presentation the other day, and it was these big swinging dicks, okay? They didn't know me. So I open up. Now, I'm presenting. So I open up, and I say, hey, you know, my, because I'm very personable. Right. 
So, hey, you know, my name is Brian Ciccone. I say what team I'm on. <clears throat> talk about my family. Nobody does this. I talk about my wife. I talk about my two boys. And I say, oh, and just fun fact, I'm a personal trainer on the side, and I have a podcast called, called The Model Mindset I have with a friend. Check it out. <laughs> there it is, because right? Because that is what I want to associate myself with. Right, right. And, and that I, shows confidence, too. 100%. And I know they're not going to probably remember anything I say about that presentation. Right. But they'll fucking remember I have a podcast. Yeah. They'll remember this dude's a personal trainer. Right. And you want to know what? A dude reached out to me asking me about, like, uh, he's trying to lose weight. And yeah. he wants to know, like, how many steps he should have in a day. Right, right. Or, like, recommendations around how he should start moving more. Yeah, right. And so I was like, dude, move in the morning, 20 right. minutes. At lunch, 20-minute walk. Yep. After dinner, with your wife and your kids, go for a walk. Right. And he's like, that is super helpful. Mm -hmm. Just simple things. Right. He didn't know what the fuck I right. said to right. you know? exactly. But, like, that's what you want. So I yeah. understand, like, the confidence you're talking about and not wanting your... I'll say job because it's not a career. No, I never you. said a career. Yes, I said it's a job. Yeah, you didn't want to. You didn't want to be known for that, right? You know, it's 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 one hundred percent true. Yeah, and it's you want to associate with your passions. You know, you want to connect with them on every level. Yeah, and that's kind of what it is now. And uh, yeah, man, like when I was when I was running through that, and I'm thinking like, well, yeah, like sports teams and stuff like that. I certainly can understand a level of confidence and where I was limited there um but like the more I thought about it and like how we're on the precipice of something now like yeah. like we're like grinding for this thing yeah and um we're succeeding in a lot of ways and the things we're doing and it's like okay I feel that now yeah. and I never felt that before so like that it was like a light bulb went off just doing the prep for this yeah. Now I'm like, holy shit, that's, that's what, awesome. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. That's that's what we're chasing, right? Yeah. So again, it's like you have to experience these things to be able to maybe help other people with them. Yeah. And when the light bulbs go off like that, it's it's super fascinating. It's yeah. interesting, right? Yeah. Um and so like I mentioned, yeah, like you know, I, I could have associated myself with sports teams and stuff like yeah. that, right? Yeah. And in our conversations with this, you had a great great example yeah. um of kind of how your self-confidence waned a little bit yeah with with your athletic career yeah. right so kind of <clears> explain <throat> that a little bit here because I, I found that very interesting yeah so just some backstory so i've been playing soccer since four years old uh started playing travel eight premier which is you know uh a very high skill level after travel yep uh at around 13 and i had the best coach at age 13 his name is Adam Wilkinson. And I remember at that time, I was playing outside defender, outside back. And I would start here and there. And this one practice, he pulled me over to the side and said, have you ever played center back? And I said, no. And he goes, you're going to play center back. I believe in you. You're one of the fastest guys on the team. And I can teach you. Yeah. You just have to make sure you absorb what I'm teaching you. Right. And it was a belief that no one had ever expressed to me like that. <clears throat> and I hung on to every single word he taught me. And my ability in soccer was off the charts. Yeah. That season alone, my teammates, my teammates voted me Defender of the Year, mm. which just having your own teammates say, this dude... Carried a, you know Absolutely, I mean? yeah. Your peers hold the most water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So my confidence was sky high. Mm -hmm. Going into my freshman year of high school, very confident that I was going to make varsity. And I remember we played J one JV game. When I say we, it was me, Dan Russo, and Ricky Coop. We played one JV game, all the score, and we just beat the shit out of this team. Mm -hmm. Varsity team loses. Very next day, our coach is like, all right, guys, you're coming up to varsity. So that freshman year, I'm starting a couple games. I'm the first guy off the bench. Very good freshman year. Score a couple goals. Sophomore year, it's off to a great start, man. Second leading score on the team. I remember my mom still has it, this article where it's uh, in Agnostia, Jaconi, lead EHS past, I think it was like Windsor Locks. Yeah. And 
but I had some adversity. Uh, sophomore year, it was in October, I went for a, a 50-50 ball, and I didn't have my ankle lock, and the a player from the opposing team, East Windsor, kicked the ball like as hard as he could, and my ankle just went the other way. And I played a couple more games, a couple more practices, and my foot was killing me. It was killing me. So I told my mom I need to get an x-ray. Went and got an x-ray. They said it wasn't broken. I was like, what the fuck? It's, it's killing me. Mm-hmm. Now, I've been playing soccer all year round since probably around like six or seven. All year round. No breaks. Even the summer I'm playing. So in the winter time, I actually took two sessions off for winter playing with my premier team to try to heal up and advice of the doctors. First outdoor game for my premier team, which is in about April, I get slide tack from very first game. I get slide tack from behind, break my ankle. Get rushed to the hospital. They take an x-ray. Clearly, clearly it's broken. It's like hanging off. <laughs> and so he's like, you previously broke your ankle. And I was like, I knew it. Yeah, right. So the doctor misread the x-ray. I already had a fractured ankle. And so this kid just... Yeah, just blew the thing yeah. up, huh? So I had surgery on it, and so my sophomore year was like ruined. Yeah. I didn't score another goal after after like I had seven or eight, didn't score another goal. So my junior year, I had you know rehab, personal tr- um, physical therapy, yep. got done probably like July. Sophomore year, score maybe two goals. I played okay. Yeah. Premier practice, Jamari. I don't know if you remember yep, Jamari. I do, yep. Slide tackled me from the side, broke my ankle. So this is three consecutive years that I broke my ankle. Had to have surgery again. Yeah. Had to have surgery, orthoscopic surgery on my ankle, and then on top of my foot, they had to um, tighten ligaments. My ankle was a mess. So senior year, I remember getting cleared by the uh, physical therapist, and I go... To captain's practice. Now, I was a captain at the time, but that was my first captain's practice, and the season started in like two weeks. And right away, I'm playing center mid. I didn't do any conditioning, nothing. I am not playing well. Mm. Not playing well because I have no stamina. Right. There's nothing. I'm coming off serious injuries. Three surgeries, yeah. right? Yeah. And I remember really good friends of mine, but I remember them saying, dude, what happened to you? What happened to you? And I'm like, because I knew, I knew I was not the same player. Right. And I was, I was saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get back in the thing, of th- in the yeah. swing of things, yeah. you know. But when they started to not believe in me, I stopped believing myself. Yeah. The soccer field had always been a safe haven for me. Didn't matter if I had a great day or a bad day, I always counted on that soccer field being yeah. my saving grace. That my senior year, it felt like a prison. I did not want to be in that field anymore. Because I knew that those guys in that field did not believe in me, which meant I stopped believing myself. Right, right. And my senior year, we, we didn't have a very good season. Towards the end of the season, we started playing better, but <clears throat> it, it was not good. Yeah. I, I didn't get any scholarship offers, which I always assumed that I would. Yeah. And that after my senior year, after that soccer season, I made a promise to myself. I said, you're going to get healthy, you're going to start working out, and you, got, you have a point to prove. Because my buddy that was playing at Manchester Community College was like, hey, why don't you, why don't you play here? Yeah. We have a very good team. So I said, okay. I, I didn't have any options. Right. So I said, okay. So I got fully healthy, and I had a fucking chip on my shoulder. Because they didn't, the coaches didn't know me, the guys on an MCC didn't know me, so they didn't know that I did not have a very good mm-hmm. season. Right. So I fucking worked my ass off. And I remember that, that first year at MCC, every practice I brought a level of intensity that coach always recognized. Mm-hmm. I went from not being a starter a couple games in to starting forward. Mm-hmm. Then the next thing I would start uh, defense. I would start center mid. They would move me everywhere that they felt they had like a gap. Yeah. And that season, the first year, I had a very good season. 
second season, I still was busting my ass. I was captain, and I made all region, all uh, all state, and uh, coaches award. And like we talked about before about your um, identity and your self worth. Yeah. That senior year, my identity, my self worth, was tied into to my soccer playing playing ability. Yeah. My confidence was shot. And <clears throat> what I've realized is that I was always getting recognition with my soccer ability. When I stopped having that or what that belief, I was lost. I got you. I was yeah. lost. Yeah, right, right. So my confidence on the soccer field was my confidence in life. Yeah. And when that was stripped away, I was so lost. I was so lost. Yeah. And I knew that I had to work my ass off to restore that belief in me and restore that ability that I had. Right. And, and when I see some of the, my buddies now who was on that uh, Enfield High soccer team and then they played with me a couple years after college, I was a completely different player. Completely different player. Right. Like I stepped on that field. I fucking own that field. Yeah, I mean, we won like men's league championship. Right, I know right. it's men's league, but it's like that was the player I was. Yeah, right. You know, right. Yeah, and, and you had to you had to <clears throat> climb through some discomfort there. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and that that's the biggest thing, man. Like yeah. we're talking about, like putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. Yeah. Right. And you were forced to do that mm. because you you like you said when your peers are asking that question. Yeah. How, how can you have confidence? Right. Oh yeah. So like couple that with the 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 trauma your body's going through. Yeah. Right. And then like you said, you challenge yourself. Yeah. And that's where it switched for you, right? Yeah. So for all of us now, I think no matter what it is, right? Soccer field, professionally, right? Like whatever it may be, challenge yourself. Yeah. Put yourself out there and you will grow from it. Yeah, absolutely. And You'll I, gain I think, confidence from the experience. And I think sports is so easy to talk about because if you think about, like, look at NFL football, look yeah. at baseball right yeah. now, NBA playoffs are in the way. So we see all these, like, superhuman athletes. Yeah. But when you see someone struggling, you know, we saw Russell Westbrook struggle. Right. Um, you see all these players struggle. Yeah. And Bruce uh, Kepka. Yep. when he actually had a good masters. Right. But that dude's confidence was shot. Yeah. Ask him. He had zero confidence. Yeah, man. And when you struggle with your confidence, you're questioning almost like your whole life. Yeah. You're questioning everything's your a question. Exactly. Everything. And it's it's tough. Yep. Because I think when you're an athlete and when you are heavily involved in sports and when you receive this acknowledgement and accolades from excelling at sports, that's what your identity is. Yeah. That's what your confidence is tied to. Right, right. And when you stop having that, or when there's a question mark about your ability, man, you you are lost. Yeah. You are, and I yeah. went through that for quite some time, man. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that's the first time I actually shared that Yeah. about my struggle my senior year. Yeah. And like my my buddies will still bring it up here and there yeah. about it. I don't like to talk about it. Yeah. But I'm okay talking about it now because I know that I became a, a better player. I was going to say that, man. A better player. You know the journey you know, now. Yeah, exactly. You know the journey. For a long time, man, I was very um, ashamed yeah. of that senior year. I yeah. was very ashamed of it and I was embarrassed, yeah. quite frankly. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we did have a good team, and for a long time, I felt like I was the reason we didn't mm -hmm. have a good team. Yeah. Or didn't make it as far as we did. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But I think now, like I said, when we're able to step back and look at the journey, yeah, and look where we're at now, and yeah. what our confidence looks like now, and what it's based off of now, mm -hmm. you can learn to appreciate it a little bit. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, I think... You know, a lot of good stuff, I think, we talked about here, but yeah, ways we can become more confident. Yes. Let's break it down, yeah, right? Yeah, for because sure. we talked about it a little bit yeah. already, right? Yeah. But let's kind of put a bow on it here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's let's kind of say, okay, these these are our bullet points that we came up with on, on how to become more confident, right? Yeah. 
make lists of your achievements and things in your life that you are proud of, right? Yeah. And we talked about achievements before. Maybe put them in maybe a more of a negative light, but there are positives that you can you know attribute to your achievements. Okay, 100%. so it's, we're not poo pooing on achievements, yeah. right? Yeah. All we're doing is we're we're also embellishing intentions as well. Okay. It's proving a point that you have been successful in the past. Exactly. You need to recall those moments. To give yourself exactly. Confidence. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. Acknowledge your personal strengths and talents and remind yourself of them often, right? Yeah. And so that. we talk about we talk about it a lot here, but like positive self talk. Yeah. That's another one, right? But it goes hand in hand here. But like that's that's something a lot of us bad at yeah we're really not good at it you know because you feel like it may come off as conceited or whatever it is if you're if you're having if you're patting yourself on the back whatever it is right but positive self-talk is like the ultimate in having confidence you need to talk to yourself like you are talking to your best friend yes you need to respect yourself oftentimes we are our worst critics yep but if we can, like, I'll be real with you. You, mm -hmm. you, know, you know this too. Yeah. That I'm, I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. If you say, if you, you know, imposter syndrome we were talking about a couple weeks ago. You know I'm going to say to you, I'm going to pick you up. Yeah. I'm going to give you all this because I believe in you. Yeah. But yet I'm going to be hard on myself. You need to. That's a great point. You need to. To flip that switch. Yeah. You know what I talk mean? Talk to yourself the way you talk to me. Yeah. Right. Your best friend. You're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna shit all over your best friend. Exactly. So why do that to you? Yeah. Great fucking point. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Set realistic goals for yourself and follow through. We that touched on that. Good. We touched on that pretty good here today. Yeah. I thought I think that's keep a promise that's, you make to yourself. I love it. Non negotiables, yeah. right? Yeah. Make time for your hobbies and try out some new things to find out what you are passionate about. Yeah. And that's kind of exactly what I did. I stumbled into a little bit where I knew what I was passionate about, right? Mm -hmm. But I put a focus on it. Um, I, try, I tried some new things with, with my you know, interactions and stuff like that, finding out maybe I like it more than I thought I would, and, and here I am, right? So um, that, that's obviously very important. Um, talk to a counselor or a mental health professional to learn self-management strategies that can help you build confidence and self-esteem, right? Yeah, I think if you're so elaborate if, on that a little bit. Yeah, I think if you if you're really if you're self confident, if, if you literally cannot find anything to hang your hat on yeah. to gain some self confidence, yep. and you would classify it maybe as depression. There it is. I would say seek some mental help. Of course, you know, there's yeah, nothing wrong with that. There's I not. I saw a therapist in my uh, early twenties. Yeah, it was off the charts. Incredibly impactful. Yeah. You know, because yep. it gave me some tools that probably during that time I wouldn't have thought about yeah. using. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, and therapy and all that and, and, and having to help those professionals, it's part of people's everyday maintenance too. Yeah. Right? So, like, um, the mentors that we listen to all the time, they have they, therapy. They do. They talk about it all the time. Absolutely. There's no people frown upon therapy thinking that it's a weakness. Yeah. And strength. in my personal opinion, it's totally a strength because what you're doing is you are growing yourself. Yeah. You are making sure that you're healing from any kind of past scars yep. or anything that maybe has has um, has affected you in a negative way. And right. you're just trying to make sure that you uh, work through that. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So all in all, we have a lot of ways that we can become more self-confident, right? Absolutely. Grow ourselves. A lot of it comes from discomfort, which is the point. Um, a lot of it comes from understanding yourself, knowing your intentions. Yep. Uh, but all in all, I think everyone, everyone has the ability to be more confident in themselves. Without a doubt. So, as always, guys, we appreciate it. We love having these conversations. Tonight was fun, man. Hell I yeah. really like this conversation. Absolutely. Um, we worked hard on this one, and, it, and I think uh, we had probably one of our best combos so far. Yeah. So. Um, be sure guys to check out our new website, model mindset, fitness and coaching.com. We have some great stuff on there, different programs, uh, different opportunities. If you guys have questions, it gives you, you know, a platform to reach out to us. Um, you obviously can always use our socials for that as well. Um, 
Don't forget to click on the free PDF guide on our homepage there. Uh, put in your name, email address. You'll immediately get our free PDF guide to a bulletproof morning routine. Um, it's something we put together. Uh, you know, we, we practice it every day of our lives. It's Absolutely. something that we find extremely impactful in our days. So we thought we'd share it with you guys. Uh, we hope you're digging it. We hope you're loving well, what we're putting out for our Model Mindset Mondays. Uh, we got a lot more coming for you guys down the pipeline. But uh, as always, we just want to say thank you because we appreciate the hell out of you guys listening in. It's fun for us, and we, we can get more enjoyment knowing that it's fun for you too. So we will catch you guys Monday for a brand new Model Mindset Monday. Do not miss it. See you guys there. That was good, man. Yo. That, was that might be our best one. You think so? That was fucking... How long was that? Oh no, don't say it, don't say it. John? Oh yeah.